Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to use our trig functions of angles to derive a new formula to find the area of a triangle. And this formula is very helpful, especially in cases where it's difficult to calculate the height. Now we have a formula that you're all probably used to. Remember that the area of a triangle, I'm going to say a sub t, is equal to one half times the base times the height, isn't it? Now let's take a look at an acute triangle and see what this means. It means if we have a triangle that looks something like this, we lay one of the sides flat on the ground, the height is from this flat side on the ground to the tallest peak of the triangle, we'll call that H. We'll call this bottom side here B. Now let's say that I have this angle theta here, and I know that this side of the triangle has a length of A. Well, let's take a look at what that means. This H, we know from SOHCAHTOA that sine of theta is equal to H over A. So in other words, H is equal to A sine theta. So I can plug that into my formula here. The area of my triangle becomes one half. My base here, I've denoted on my triangle as a little b, and my height we found we can write as a sine theta. This gives us a new formula for the area of the triangle. The area of a triangle is one half a b sine theta. Now this is where theta is between A and B. Or in other words, I could write with our convention for labeling a triangle, theta equals capital C. Remember in a triangle, little a, the side little a is opposite angle big A, side little b is opposite angle big B, so this would be angle big C, wouldn't it, this area of a triangle. Now this isn't just limited to these acute triangles, Let's say I take a look at an obtuse triangle, uh, something, something like this. Okay, so let's say this is my triangle. Let's say this is my A, this is my B, and this is my theta. So we can see this isn't just going to be limited to acute angles here. My height here it's going to be this distance here if I were to draw in a little imaginary line from the peak of my triangle down to my base. This is my height, so I have a right angle, and I'm going to call this theta bar. That's exactly what it is, isn't it? This would be the same as my reference angle. So taking a look at it, h, well, let's see how we want to look at this, uh, sine of theta bar this is equal to h over b, isn't it? Just looking at this little triangle I drew over here. But sine of theta bar is the same as sine of theta because here we're dealing with thetas and theta bars that are between 0 and 180 degrees. So that means that I'm in either quadrant 1 or 2 in standard position, so sine is going to be positive no matter what this theta and theta bar is in this type of triangle. So I get that h is equal to, oh, and I've labeled this triangle backwards actually, let me, well that's okay, we'll be alright, this is b sine of theta, right, just multiplying both sides by b over here. Now here I've labeled it a little bit differently, I actually labeled my base as a, but this is still going to give us the same formula, isn't it? Here where a is my base and h becomes b sine theta. So in either case, we get this new formula for a triangle based on the angle, and notice again, we must have that theta is between A and B. It needs to be the angle that A and B share a common vertex at, okay? It can't be this angle up here or this angle down here, right? It needs to be the one between. So let's see how we would use this in practice. 
we could just be given a triangle. It says find the area of a triangle. Now we could go through the effort of calculating H here. I have this triangle, I have 10 centimeter base, 3 centimeter side over here, 120 degree angle between them. Now we could go through the time drawing down this line here, calculating what H is, but that's going to be kind of a hassle, isn't it? We draw this angle here, use uh, what I know about right angles and trig functions to calculate H, or I can simply plug it into my formula. The area of this triangle is one half A, which is 3, times B, which is 10, times sine of 120 degrees. So the 1 half and the 10 cancel. This is 15 sine of 120 degrees. Recall that sine of 120 degrees, I have a reference angle of 60. This is still positive, so this is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. And we're done. The area of this triangle is 15 root 3 over 2 centimeters squared. So recall that if we're ever given a unit of measurement, we need to give a proper unit of measurement in our answer. Now this was quite a bit simpler than using the right triangle properties just to calculate out the height so we could plug it in. In this case, we were already given all the information that we need with this new formula. Now let's see a, even a more complicated example where this becomes useful. Let's say we're given this diagram and we're asked to find the area of the shaded region. Okay. So that shaded region right there, we're going to need to use a little bit of context clues here. We see this is a circle of radius 2. So first, we need to find the area of the circular sector, don't we? Remember the circular sector, I'll outline it in blue, it's going to be this entire area here. Now I've, I'm being a little bit generous, but uh, just to circle what I mean of the circular sector. And remember, in the last chapter, or last section, we learned that this is going to be 1 half theta r squared. And recall we found that because the whole circle is pi r squared, and we're really looking at theta over 2 pi of the entire circle. So plugging in, 1 half. Now what do I need here? I have theta r squared. Remember, it's very important that for a lot of these formulas, I need my theta to be in radians. So first, converting to radians on the side, 120 degrees. I can multiply this by pi over 180. I'm multiplying by pi radians over 180 degrees. This is just a fancy way of multiplying by 1, right? We know this is the same angle measure. So this is going to simplify down a little bit. Um, we're going to get 4 pi. Oh, sorry. Well, it'll simplify even more than that, won't it? This is going to simplify all the way down to 2 pi over 3. So, my angle measure theta in radians is 2 pi over 3. My r is 2 from my picture, so I have 2 squared. Now, this squared and the 1 half cancel out, and I get that the area of my circular sector is 4 pi over 3. Now I need to find the area of this triangle, right? We're looking at the area of the sector. Uh, now to find the shaded area, I need to take the sector and subtract from that the area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle, let's have that a sub t. From the formula we just learned, this is 1 half a b sine theta, where a and b are the two sides that connect at the angle theta. Here my theta is 120 degrees. My a and b are both 2 because they're both just the radius of the circle. So I have 1 half times 2 for a times 2 for b sine of 120 degrees. Uh, this 2 and this 1 half cancel and we're just going to get 2 sine of 120 degrees. In the last example we saw that that's just square root of 3 over 2. Or in other words, this is just going to be the square root of 3. So we're ready for our final answer. The area, and I'll do a sub r to be the area of the shaded region, is going to be the difference. It's going to be the area of the entire sector, 4 pi over 3, minus the area of the triangle. 
Now this is as exact as we can get on paper, but if you uh, need an approximate answer, you can plug this into your calculator and we get that this is about 2.46 units. Now we don't need to put a unit of measurement because there wasn't one given in the problem. All right. Now this finishes up section 6.3. We're going to be revisiting uh, inverse trig functions in the next section, now dealing with inverse trig functions of angles and how we can use those to solve triangles. We will see you there.